This is a, a full, full menu. Amen. And he's saying, whatever you need, whatever you want, it's right here. Go, huh? Go, go through the menu. Go through the menu. Go through the menu. And just pick out some, th- oh God, just pick out some stuff. Just pick out what you need. Just pick out what your necessity is right now. Go ahead and pick out what you need. I've got a full menu. I've got a fully stocked kitchen. I've got the greatest chef in the world, the Holy Ghost. The Bible calls him the master craftsman. When Solomon built the temple, he hired a man named Huram Abi. He was the master craftsman. Nobody was better than him in ornamental work. He's a type of the Holy Spirit. I preached a message years ago. Pastor Santino is always telling me, Dad, you got to preach Master Craftsman again. He is the Master Craftsman. He knows exactly how to do what he needs to do in our lives. Anything you need is in here. He knows how to bring it. He knows how to do it. And so he says, ask of me. Ask of me. So what what does that do when when he gives us the menu and says, go ahead, just skim through it, peruse it, look for what you need, look for what you have need of in your life. Then ask me for it. When I hear him say that by the Spirit of God, you know what that does? That gives me a sense of expectation. I don't look at this Bible and go, oh, well, can't have that. That's a, oh, oh, can I get this? No, we we ran out of that. Uh, Years ago, Mary and I went to a... A French restaurant. There was some of this great French restaurant in, in Napa. And we went and I walked in. We walked in and we sat down. And, uh, <laughs> and the guy, the, the wait, waiter comes over and he goes, uh, Yes, yeah, may I help you? you know? <laughs> and I said, Yeah, I want, um, I want a, a coca van, you know. And he goes, Oh, I'm sorry. We're all out of coca van. I'm like, well, there's a French restaurant. You had a coca van? All right. Well, uh, let me look at the menu and I'll decide, you know. I said, uh, can I get some uh, French onion stew to start? And this guy looks at me, it's a French restaurant. I ordered French onion soup. And he looks at me and says, oh, I'm so sorry. We just sold the last one. I said, man, this is a French restaurant. You had a coca van. You, you, this is a French restaurant. I'm asking you for French onion soup. You're telling me you ain't got no more. I looked at Mary and I said, we're out of here. I don't need to be in a place that can't serve me. I don't need to be in a place that can't deliver what they say. See, so when I go through this book, I don't look at this and go, oh, well, uh, no, I can't have that. Can't have that. No, you, you have this? I never hear him say, I'm sorry, we ran out. His mercy is abundant. His grace is magnificent. Everything that is in the supply house of heaven has an unending supply. Anything you need tonight is accessible to you right now.
So when I read this book then and I read what it talks about and it tells me what I can have, it tells me what I'm supposed to have, it tells me what he has promised me, then it gives me a sense of expectation. I start to expect not little but much. You see, the, 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 the idea of, of being um, th- like, like the, woman, the woman who said, you know, talked about Jesus, and Jesus said, yeah, well, you know, the, 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 the Gentiles and the crumbs and the, you know, the children's bread. And, 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 and then she said, she goes, hey, e- even, even the dogs get to eat under the table. Yeah. All right, wait. Are you a dog? No. 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 You have a place at the table, and when that table is set, anything you want is on that table, and you have access to it. If I ask the waiter to bring me a tomahawk steak, guess what? If it's on the menu, he's going to bring it. I'm paying for it. Well, guess what? Ask the Holy Ghost to bring everything that God said you could have get into a sense and get to an attitude of expectation 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 what are you expecting are you expecting little or are you expecting much hallelujah I'm expecting great things. I'm not expecting God to show up and go, oh, you know what? Short-changed right now. A little short. No, abundant supply. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think or imagine. I mean, hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Come on, hello. Yes. Is he able? Yes. Is he able? Yes. Does he have an abundant supply? Yes. Did he tell you to ask? Yes. Then ask. Yes. Amen. Why would you not do what he says? Come on. Why would you not do what he says? Why would you not take him at his word? Come on, somebody. See, you've got to start to expect the Lord to honor his word. He said, you have not because you... See, you don't ask because you don't believe. You don't ask because you doubt. Some people don't ask because they don't trust. Because everybody else has, has failed them when they've asked. And he says, I'm not a man that I should lie. I'm God. I change not. I'm the Lord. I change not. I am Yahweh. I am the one who does what he says and says what he does and there is no inconsistency between what I say and what I do. And we walk in here with all of the weight of the world on our shoulders. We walk in here with all of the responsibilities and all the frustrations and all the questions and all the doubts and all the things that plague us in the natural realm affecting our spiritual existence and our emotional capacity to endure uh, uh, joyfully. And we walk in here with this and see, if I just give you some little sermonette for Christianettes and say, well, praise the Lord, now everybody go home, you're going to leave here unchanged. But if I got a rhema word in my mouth that tells you to expect God to do something something is going to happen in you and that's what God is saying he's saying take me at my word don't take me at man's word take me at my word and start to expect that what I said I'm going to do I will 
do. Ask me, ask me, ask me, ask me, ask me, ask me. And then once you start asking, get into expectation. I just got a text from, from a, a, a pastor who, who is uh, arranging for my itinerary in Argentina. He said, I got more good news for you. Doors opening up for me to preach all over Argentina. Not storefront churches. Ain't nothing wrong with storefront. I'll preach there in a hot minute. I ain't, I ain't mad at nobody. These are mega churches. Buenos Aires, Rosario, all over the place. God's just orchestrating the whole thing. Are you? Are you? He's orchestrating the whole thing. Just putting it together. I'm not stressing. I only know like two guys over there, and doors are just going boom, 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 just flying open. Why? Because God said, "Ask." Expect. Don't ask and go, please. He never said. Do you know that that word's not in there with regard to asking him? Everything we do, we do. We, can you please, would you please, would you? That's not in here. He just said, ask me. Ask me, ask me, ask me. And then when you ask, then expect me to do it. Hallelujah. 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 When I was in Florida, I asked God to give me a sign regarding some things. I told you, pastor, who I'd never met before in my life, he said, you blessed me. I gave a little short little testimony during the, the, the conference that I was at. He said, you're going to be here tonight? I said, yeah. He said, good, I want to bless you. I thought he was going to buy me a hamburger. That would have been okay. No, instead he gave me a check for $5,000. And I'm going to his church to preach next month in, in Roswell, Georgia. Big, huge, beautiful church. Preaching two Sunday morning services, packed out, and then they're blowing open the Sunday night. They don't do Sunday nights unless they know you. He said, I know you in the spirit. I want you to come and do Sunday night too. Give your testimony. He said, we're going to see people saved and delivered and set free. Backsliders are going to... I'm expecting great, great... I'm expecting great things. Hallelujah. I want you to expect much. Don't expect little. Well, little is much when God is in it, Pastor. We've been fed that stuff too long. Hello. I mean, that's true. That's an axiomatic principle. Okay, I get that. But we, we, have, we have bargained with that and expected less of God. And he's like, is that all you think I can do? Really? Re really? Like, is that all you think I'm capable of doing? Is that all you think I'm willing to do? Come on, one more time. Exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think or imagine. Expect much. Expect. Yeah, yeah. See, you got to get comfortable with that word. Mm, that's good. That's good. That's good. That was good. Yeah. You got to get comfortable with that word. Much. Not little. Not little. Much. Much. 
expect look for you know what expecting much does it 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 prepares you to receive much oh god expecting much prepares you to receive much if i don't ask i won't expect if i don't expect i won't get into a place of receiving i won't prepare myself i'll go off and do something else i'll go off and 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 uh, uh, waste time doing something else instead of staying in the place of preparation i've got to order Two, three hundred books to, to, to go to, to Atlanta. I asked, I, asked him, I asked the pastor, I said, do your people buy product? He said, yeah. I said, how many books should I order? He said, oh, you know, 200, 250, whatever. He said, they'll, they'll buy them. They'll, they'll buy them. He probably got, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 people. I don't know. He's, he's got big, he's got two services and everything. Big church. But if I said, well, they're probably not going to buy. They're not going to buy my book. I'll just take a little box like this. And I get there, and I say, I got a few books with me tonight. If you'd like to have one, you can see me in the back. So all of a sudden, I got a line of people saying, okay, I want the book. I, I should have brought more. I should have ordered more. I should have shipped more. I should have had more printed. Are you hearing me? You have to expect and then prepare to receive. So I called my publisher. I said, I I need 300 books. Ship them to Georgia. They'll be there when I get there. I'm going to sell all of them. I'm going to sell every single one. Are you hearing me tonight? I'm not being ostentatious. I'm trying to move you into faith. I'm trying to get you to understand what God said to do. He said, ask and then expect to receive. Glory. Glory. You know, I, I like the story of Elijah and, 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 and the widow woman. I like that story. Because he asked her for everything she had. God had already showed him that he could do miracles at the, at the brook. Stayed there for a year being fed by ravens. In the, in the midst of famine, where there, everything's dried up, there's a stream that's flowing with fresh water from every day. He washes clothes up in there. He's brushing his teeth in that stream. He's drinking from it. Come on, somebody. Washing his... Never mind. And then God says, okay, now move from here and go to Zarephath. I got a widow woman for you. Was God sending him into a lesser situation? No. He was sending him into a place for a greater miracle. So when he got there, he expected much. Bake me a cake. Oh, you don't understand. This is all I got left. Me and I'm going to eat it. Me and my son going to die. No, bake it for me first. Why? Because God told him that he was sending him to a place of provision. And then supernatural provision and supply would not only be hit to his benefit, but it would bless that woman. So God sends you from one place to another. He moves you into seasons from one such situation to another in your life. And in every season, he says, expect much. Expect much. Don't expect little. He didn't say, I'm sending you to Zarephath to die with the widow. 
I'm going to send you over there and you're all going to eat her last meal and die together. No, I'm sending you with a word in your mouth and the word in your mouth is going to release a miracle in her life. But you've got to expect much when you get there. So what did he expect? He expected everything she had. Guess what? I expect everything God has. I expect everything God has. Is there, is, are there people in here tonight who can get their mind wrapped around the fact that God wants you to expect everything he has? Quit going to God with your hat in your hand. Quit going to God begging. Quit going to God with a backdoor attitude. Quit going to God with an attitude of just eating crumbs under the table. Open your spirit up and begin to call on God and say, I expect to receive everything that you have at your disposal. And there's nothing you don't have. You own the cattle on a thousand hill. Everything I need is in your hand. Everything I need, you have access to. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you tonight? I'm trying to get you to wrap your mind around the fact that you need to ask God for much. There is never one time in that book where he tells somebody to ask for little. The glory of God is here. The glory of God is here. Yeah, I don't have to call you out. If you feel the quickening of the Holy Spirit, just stand up and ask. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I don't have to call. I don't have to ask. I don't have to call. Yeah, there it is. There it is. See, there, there's, there's the witness of faith. There it is. Yeah. It's happening even now. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Glory. 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 Karina, stand up and ask. You didn't think you could. 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 You didn't think God would. God said, watch. Tamara, come here. Come here. Speak healing over your body now in the name of Jesus. Command all that pain to go in Jesus' name. It goes now. In the name of Jesus. Now, now go back to your seat and stand and ask. Don't sit down. Stand and ask. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Expect much. Say, Lord, I'm standing. My hands and my heart are open. I'm asking, expecting. You're not going to say no to me. I hear your yes in my spirit. I declare the amen. I speak the amen. I decree that it's so. I shall receive. I shall prepare myself to receive abundant blessings everything I need is in your storehouse I open my mind I open my heart I open my spirit to receive right now I'm expecting expectation moves me into preparation I'm going to have to move stuff out of the way to make room for what you're bringing. I'm going to have to clear my calendar because I'm going to be so full of what you're bringing in my life. I will no longer settle for the paltry, for the little, for the minimal. I am expecting great, mighty, amazing, abundant, above all that I can ask or think, or even imagine, and my imagination is good, but your knowledge is better. So I receive right now everything you have for me. 
based on my asking and based on my expectation, I am now in a state of preparation, getting ready to receive from you by your spirit for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now give him praise.